In the long run, it maybe even works out for them because the Cowboys weren't going anyway, a anywhere this year that they may not be going otherwise. Like, in other words, someone's got to win the NFC East. I think it probably will be the Cowboys because everyone else is terrible. And then once they get to the playoffs, they ain't winning any games. So that's the same with Andy Dalton or Dak Prescott or whomever. This year's a wash. But next year... I'll bet you Dak is much more amenable and his agent to signing the kind of deal the Cowboys would want them to sign. And Stephen A., if that's not a longer, as long a term deal for quite as much, as much money, that's the risk you take by playing on a franchise tag instead of signing that deal. I don't see why they wouldn't. Like, Andy Dalton's a nice quarterback. He's a starting caliber quarterback for a lot of his career. He's considered a solid middle-class franchise quarterback. And Dak already is considered something a little more than that, if not quite elite. They're going to start playing the NFC East pretty soon, more and more, and they're probably going to win some of those games. And, and, hey, Andy Dalton looks okay, but the Cowboys know Dak is better than Andy Dalton. They realize they're going to have to pay a premium eventually. And I think now Dak and his agent probably realize uh, we should probably sign the next $100 million deal we get offered or whatever the multiple-year deal that the Cowboys will offer is. Yeah, I, I believe Stephen Jones thinks that they want Dak Prescott and now also believes they're not, not going to have to pay through the teeth, qu through the nose, quite like they were going to have to. Well, that's what I'm talking about, not paying through the nose like they thought they were going to have to. And that's the relevancy here, Max Kellerman. Nobody wants to hear you bloviate about ignoring market value. Market value does matter. In other words, of course, $100 million is a lot of money. Of course, $30 million a year is a lot of money. We're talking about in comparison to the other quarterbacks that they would get paid. It wasn't like Dak Prescott never got offered anything. He got offered money. We understand that, that, that reality. But I hearken you back to the early 90s. The Dallas Cowboys have won a Super Bowl championship. And Jerry Jones decides, even though he had paid Michael Irvin, and even though he had paid Troy Aikman, and even though he had paid a plethora of other dudes, it was Emmitt Smith that he was deciding to play hardball with. Now, he had offered Emmitt Smith a pretty good deal, but Emmitt Smith knew that at the time, he was one of the top two running backs in all of football, plus he was a reigning defending Super Bowl champion, and he deserved his money. Ultimately, the Dallas Cowboys lose the first two games of the season with Jimmy Johnson coaching. Jimmy Johnson, post-game, throws up his hands, but not a word comes out of his mouth because he's basically saying, I need my guy. I'm frustrated without verbalizing those words specifically. Jerry Jones ultimately signs Emmitt Smith. And if you go back, if we can go back to the archives, you will go back and you will see that press conference when Jerry Jones and Emmitt Smith is sitting next to one another. Emmitt Smith at the time was paid the highest contract for a running back in football, and he looked absolutely positively furious. Why? Hold Why? Because he was kept waiting, and you chose him to play hardball with. That is relevant when I bring up Tony Romo, who had comparable stats to a Dak Prescott, and even with one playoff win in nine years as a quarterback or eight years as a quarterback, you pay him $108 million, the highest-paid contract in the history of the Dallas Cowboys franchise, and the man didn't do anything I, compared to what a Dak Prescott does. We fast-forward to last summer. We saw Jalen Smith. We saw Demarcus Lawrence. We saw a host of other Dallas Cowboys taking care of you. You yourself were sitting right across from me, all right, in studio prior to the pandemic, and even you acknowledge there's a whole host of people that Jerry Jones is taking care of wearing a Dallas Cowboy uniform, but not the quarterback. That's Wait the kind minute. of Hold stuff on. that I'm talking Hold about on. here. Just said Everything just ain't said just all... about dollars and cents. It's how you, you handle it. You just said all... You just said a whole lot, and it's making the opposite point, I think, that you think it's making. First of all, Emmett Smith. Dak Prescott's not the Emmett Smith of, of quarterbacks. I know exactly Emmett Smith what I'm was saying. absolutely elite. If there's no Barry Sanders, he'd have been clearly the best running back in the world. That's not Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott's not a top five That's quarterback. Not all the, the numbers point. he's putting up, notwithstanding. And yet, and yet, they're paying him without resetting the market, which, by the way, he wasn't going to do in a world with Patrick Mahomes. They're paying him You're going in line in a different direction. with the elite quarterbacks. They offered him an elite quarterback contract, which he turned down, period. 
If you think that Jerry because Jones they wanted Tony to Romo hold him for even years, more than Dak Prescott, fine. What's that got to do with it? Because anything? they wanted to hold him for five he, yes, years. Yes, they wanted to. Ha when have you seen Jerry Jones and them right. do that? Right. Oh, and now, because you want four years, not five. Actually, we ain't gonna Stephen give it to a, you. You you have to be. See, see, when you talk about you're lying to the American people, you know full well what agents are trying to do now. They're trying to get in on increased salary cap that they project is coming up. So now a lot of agents want slightly shorter contracts so they can cash in now and recash in. Yesterday. Right. Okay. So since you know that, then you also know why the Dallas Cowboys wanted cost certainty going forward, and why Dak's agent was pushing against that. But I'm the not bottom talking line about what they wanted. They offered him the Carson Wentz, Jared Goff deal. I'm not talking about what they wanted. I'm talking about what they refused to settle for when it came to their quarterback. There are a multitude of instances throughout Jerry Jones's history when if he had a personal affection for you, guess what? He would acquiesce to certain things. All I'm saying is, is that that did not happen with Dak Prescott. You sent your mm -hmm. quarterback out there on a one-year deal. On a one-year deal, you're going to bring him back on mm -hmm. a one-year deal. Smart. I'm saying there are a multitude of Smart. instances where we right, looked fellas. at players Spicy that are playing for Jerry Jones. Like he it. didn't do that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.